<sighs> Hi everyone, Dayquil Day here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a sickly review of the new Glassjaw album, Material Control, 15 years later. And finally, a comeback album from Hempstead, New York band, Glassjaw. A post-hardcore outfit who fractured in the 2000s after two full-length records, everything you ever wanted to know about silence and worship and tribute, neither of which are really truly highlights for me in the genre. I certainly see the appeal of worship and tribute, Sure. But aside from the occasionally frantic and dissonant and sort of spastic guitar passages on that record, I found the band compositionally to be average at best. And the singing of frontman Daryl Palumbo always struck me as being borderline silly, always pulling off these super overdone vocalizations that I just cannot really stand for whatever reason. Yet somehow I'm really into the band Blood Brothers. Figure that one out. <laughs> In the 2000s, I think it's safe to say that I respected Glassjaw more than I actually enjoyed them. I thought they were definitely a cut above a lot of the sweeter post-hardcore bands out there that had a strong appeal in the emo community. But they weren't really clicking with a younger me, like I was very much more a Fugazi guy, Tribe Like Jehu guy, uh, Big Black, or even a McCluskey guy. So as a result, I can't say I went into this new Glassjaw album with the highest of hopes, but I was definitely curious as to how the band would sound after over a decade of studio album silence. And I gotta say, I think they really kind of came back with a vengeance on this one. Some parts of this record are a friggin' barn burner. The band is going full volume on this thing, full density, full energy, full dynamic range. The mix on this thing is thick, like a cheesecake lasagna. The guitars and bass on this thing are mixed to sound so heavy, which of course are topped with all these wild, freaky, dissonant guitar leads and solos. The drumming is very on point, though a lot of the time I'll say it's pretty lost in the chaos. And miraculously, Daryl has kind of refined his vocal style on this one. While the studio performance here doesn't sound quite as organic as it has in the past, the band is definitely sounding cleaner and sleeker, especially now with Daryl's singing sounding like a combination of Chino from Deftones, Mike Patton era Faith No More, a little bit of Perry from Jane's Addiction, and just like a smidge of Cedric from Mars Volta and At The Drive-In. It's not the most original sound I've ever heard, but certainly is appealing to me a little bit more than much of the band's early material. And it seems like all the bands I just mentioned are having like a bit of a compositional influence on Glassjaw this time around too. Though the band is pretty much known as being a post-hardcore group from over a decade ago, you can't really come away from this album saying that they're just carrying the torch for an old sound or that they're stuck in the past. Still though, occasionally Daryl does come through on this album with these obnoxious, overextended vocalizations like on Bible Land or My Conscious Weighs a Ton, or especially on the song Citizen. <laughs> I, I just do not see the appeal of this vocal style seriously. Extending your vocal notes out to the point where the vocal melody loses any memorability is just kind of ugh. Still, again, I do think this album presents vocal improvements all around. Just keep in mind that's the opinion of somebody who wasn't really a huge Glassjaw fan to begin with. In my opinion, when this album is at its best, it's delivering to listeners these layered, sour, tense verses that suddenly transition into these crushing, riffy hooks that just destroy everything in their path. Like on the multi-phase Pompeii, which, uh, considering the structure of the song, it's, it's kind of progressive. Also the incredibly enraged New White Extremity that kicks the entire record off. And then you have the surprisingly sweet Shira, which transitions into a soaring and uh, an incredibly melodic and uh, really captivating hook that if there's any point on the album that shows a huge Deftones influence, it's it's right here. The closing track on this thing is relatively solid too. There are certainly a number of highlights in the track listing here, but there are also a handful of completely innocuous cuts that only seem to pad the track listing out, which uh, this is only like a 36 minute album. There's not that much material on it to begin with. An album of this size and shape and uh, expectation level, given that it is a comeback album, should just be all killer and no filler. And yet, we have the title track on this thing, which is like a weird, boomy drum loop complete with these 
uh, frantic little guitar passages. It sounds like a battles demo. And then the song Bastille Day seems like a weird percussion circle that never quite goes anywhere interesting, though it does transition into the following track kind of nicely. And then we have the very moody and long-winded Strange Hours, whose atmosphere, whose aesthetic is very despondent. I do like the emotional variety it brings to the record, but compositionally, this, this entire song would just be a wash if it weren't for the swell of distorted guitars and melodic vocals on the hook. It's not interesting for the entirety of its runtime, nor is it one of the better songs on this thing. Overall, this is a pretty good record considering it's been 15 years since the last one. It certainly came through harder and heavier and more aggressive than I thought it was going to be, but it's still kind of an inconsistent album though, and yet one-dimensional. This album rarely veers outside of the tone that is set at the beginning of the album with the pummeling guitars and the wailing lead vocals, and when it does it leads to some of the album's most awkward moments. I do hope that Glassjaw continues though. It does seem on this record they wanted to give fans something different and show them that after all these years they're still willing to continue to evolve and take risks as opposed to simply just pandering and doing what they've done all along. As long as they continue to maintain that mindset there's always going to be a chance for interesting music coming down the pipe. I'm feeling a decent to strong six on this thing. Tran. Zition, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best. You're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like. If you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Just leave a thoughtful comment down in the comments if you're feeling thoughtful. Dog Barking, over here next to my head, is another review that you can check out or you can click on the link to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one forever.